We have a new nemesis, and her name is Pamela Bozanich. She was the prosecutor at the Menendez brothers' trial, and in the new Netflix documentary about the Menendez brothers, where we hear from them for the first time in 30 years, Lyle. Eric has done a couple interviews here and there, but Lyle. Ms. Bozanich is, I guess she was going for bitter, angry Karen, because that's what she accomplished. It has been 30 years, and we have evolved so much in how we understand abuse cases, especially with men. Like, you can't look back at this trial, these trials, there were two. You can't look back at them and think, this is great. We did this perfectly. The, you got the judge saying that men can't be or boys can't be sexually assaulted when that is just factually untrue. And now, since then, we've had Oprah doing episodes about men who've been sexually abused. You'd think that this Pamela lady would have adapted and evolved, but no. She, thank God she's not practicing law anymore. My God. So she is our nemesis. Uh, but now let's talk about this documentary. It, I didn't learn anything new because I've also sought out content. But if you are unfamiliar with the case, this is a perfect no documentary to sit through because it breaks everything down from their perspective, from their words. All right, let's get into that. But before I do, if you're new to the show, hello, I'm Emily. I cover TV and entertainment news, and I go live every Sunday on YouTube at 10 a.m. PT to wrap up the week and chat with my fellow messes. So subscribe, follow, like, comment, and now let's get into it. The biggest takeaway I have was the media coverage and the, and society's response. When you get all this footage of even just the way that one of the reporters talking about Leslie Abramson, who was Eric's defense attorney, one of them goes, she may look like a little orphan Annie, but she is all power or something like that. Or a little orphan Annie lookalike. Look at that one. You didn't need to say. No, we don't because she's got the little hair. All right. Just we were very problematic. Um, Pamela, P Pamela, she obviously hates Leslie. And what she says is, if I told you what I really thought, I would be sued because I believe she's lost all of her money and I'm not giving up my house. All right. So what are you saying here? You're saying she's lost all of her money because she had been what sued? Uh, what's what's that mean? And that you're saying she's so litigious now that if you say anything about how you really feel, she's going to sue you and take your shut up, Pamela. All right. Pamela goes on to say about the brothers, once they once the trial has started, she says, I didn't feel like I was in the presence of pure evil. They were like potted plants to me, poisonous potted plants. But there was nothing about them that I found fascinating. They were just these dumb jock killers. Cool. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, Pamela. Nice. Now, as a prosecutor, you probably have to feel like that. I think that that's maybe not that uncommon. I think it's more that she still continues to double down when almost everyone who's been involved in the case is like, yeah, no, except for the people who were in charge, like the DA, the judge. But you had the judge literally saying boys cannot be sexually assaulted because anatomically it's impossible. We've come far from since this point in time. Oprah had a whole episode about men who were sexually abused as children. So it's like I would have thought by now, nope, Pamela is not moving. She's not budging. And I think the only reason she did this documentary was to try to, like, I don't know, slap us into reality or something with her bitterness. OK, a couple of things that maybe maybe you guys didn't know. Uh, I knew, but it was it was good to finally hear this, like, confirmed. Dr. Ozeal in Monsters, the Ryan Murphy show, they showed a scene. It was hard to tell what they meant was fact or not facts. They show a scene where Jose Menendez calls a doctor and says, I'm going to want you to tell me everything that they say in the session. Now, not many therapists, psychiatrists will do that because that's um, unethical. But this Dr. Ozeal signed a piece of paper that said, yeah, anything Eric says in here, I will tell you. And so what do you think that was for? To make sure he wasn't talking about the sexual abuse. Duh. 
right? Also, this Dr. Ozeal had a whole affair going with Judalon Smith, who was a patient originally. The whole reason this ends up coming out that he, that Dr. Ozeal was taping them and whatever, is that Judalon Smith goes to the police to report him, Dr. Ozeal, to say that he had abducted her and assaulted her, drugged her, held her hostage, threatened her life. Oh, and by the way, he recorded the Menendez brothers talking about how they killed their parents. Oh, okay. That is one thing that I will say Monsters did do well in terms of the acting. They showed how difficult it was for these boys to open up about it and that they just kept repeating, I love my father. My father was a great man. He was an amazing person, etc. That was like proof of programming, proof of that grooming, and also proof that this was someone who was... If you're not familiar with abuse then it's such a foreign concept. You know, a lot of the time people being like, why didn't he, why didn't they leave? Why didn't they move, et cetera? It's like, well, first of all, Eric was only 19. Lyle didn't live in the house full time. Eric did. And the big thing for Eric was he thought when he went to college, he was going to go to Stanford, that the assault would stop because I won't live here. You can't do it. But Jose Menendez said, "Uh, no way. You're going to UCLA and you're living here. And so it's like it's never going to end. And if you don't know what abuse and grooming and all of that stuff is, maybe this still maybe doesn't make sense to you. But all of this tracks to me. At the trial, Dr. Ann Burgess speaks on behalf of the defense. Now, if you don't know who Dr. Ann Burgess is, recently Hulu released a three-part docuseries on Dr. Ann Burgess, called Mastermind. I highly recommend it. And they do even talk about when she's, because I guess it wasn't common. Expert witnesses for the defense didn't happen. I guess it was kind of frowned upon, like the enemy. But this woman was innovative in so many ways. We owe her as women so much because she was the one who brought the FBI, the concept of rape as a crime, because up until that point, these people thought women secretly wanted it. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you, Dr. Ann Burgess. But she she realized that these kids did not unalive their parents because of money, which is all Pamela. All a lot of people thought the whole media did that, too. They went on big shopping sprees. And I, I, I like that they do address it. It's like that's what their dad taught them to do. And their mom taught them to do was to be rich and buy things and 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 not talk about what was wrong and have secrets and all of that. So when in Monsters, the Ryan Murphy show, they showed them spending all this money and like having the best time. I thought it was so unfair because by now we know that things can look one way on the outside, but underneath there's different meaning. You know, these were kids who were used to secrets, especially Eric. So to, it just makes sense to me that they were like, OK, do what we have been taught. Lyle, especially Lyle starts like emulating his father and trying to act like his father. I mean, these kids were fucked up. And so. Thank you, Dr. Ann Burgess, for speaking on their behalf. The other therapist who worked mainly with uh, Lyle and Eric, but Eric especially, said that it was months of him repeating the same thing. I love my father. My father's a great man. I love my father. My father's a great man. And for them, they're going, but you unalived your parents. So why? You're not telling us why. And it just shows how deep that programming was. And how grooming works when it's also an incest situation, it's even more layered because when uh, Eric gets on the stand, he admits that when his father first started abusing him, he didn't want it to stop because that was his alone time with his dad. So like that's the type of fucked up stuff that happens when there's an incestual situation. On the stand also, I actually didn't remember this story. Lyle is asked if he ever told his mother, and he did. And she had said, stop it. You are exaggerating, and your dad has to punish you when you do things wrong. But then also said he loved him. Ooh, ooh. And then Lyle has to get into what he did to Eric and 
I started crying at that part because I could just see the way Eric was just so affected by when Lyle said, I'm sorry. He talks about how he had done that. Oh, it just, it breaks my heart even thinking about it because it's like he was such a kid. Lyle was a kid trying to make sense of what his dad was doing to him. So if he did it to Eric because his dad said it was because he loved him, then, you know, it would be, it would be okay and make it normal. But how it just it eats him up. And Eric says that was the first time he ever said he was sorry for that. Oh, God. Heavy. Real heavy. There's the knife. St- I didn't remember this knife story either from the testimony. Um, but a, a, Eric's testimony was that he had said no one time. And Jose went and got a knife and put it to his neck and said, I'll kill you. And th- I mean, hell, this is a little kid. When you're hearing it from adults, it's always different. Or 19 year olds, 21 year olds. These were like six year olds, seven year olds. So that's what you have to be. They're going to believe these things. They're going to, this is what grooming is. Oh, God, sorry. I, if you're looking for an unbiased recap of this, you're not going to get it. I clearly believe the brothers and am on their side here and just feel like the lives that they were given were so unfair. And they've had to serve all this time. While Gypsy Rose, Gypsy Rose is believed. Gypsy Rose is believed 100%. If you see a story about her, there are some people, I guess, who don't believe it. But I do. I believe she was abused. But the fact that this occurred with the Menendez brothers so before anyone was willing to look at incest and boys being abused, it's they're still struggling to be believed. It's sad. You know what's so annoying about being an adult? Having to clean up after yourself. And if you have kids or pets, I guess if you have kids, they can eventually learn to help you out. But pets, I'll tell you, my cats never help me, even when I say, you made this mess. But look, if you're going to be using cleaning products, they need to be non-toxic, all natural. But I find that it's actually quite difficult to find an entire line of products like that. But along came a new sponsor. Branch Basics. And they do something I've never seen before. They've got this big mother product, the concentrate. And this big bottle of concentrate goes in all of the other cleaning bottles, like the all purpose or the window cleaner or the laundry or the hand soap or the bathroom. You follow the instructions on each bottle. So it'll say, for example, for the window, it says fill the bottle with water and add one drop of the concentrate and shake. And you can see it'll have your little marker here for where they want you to fill it up. And then you shake it up. I've been using the all-purpose cleaner and it's legit. But what's so great about this is that now I have all the cleaning supplies I need. And if I run out of anything and I don't have any more of the concentrate, I only have to replace this because I was getting really annoyed with having to buy a bunch of individual brands of products because that one does the windows, that one does the tile, whatever. Branch Basics is a plant and mineral based, all natural, never tested on animals, biodegradable. Ugh. Hello. And also, because everything is so all natural, if you have eczema, the laundry detergent with the concentrate, that's the way to go. Or if you have allergies or asthma, yeah, switch to Branch Basics. Branch Basics Premium Starter Pack replaces every cleaner in your entire house. Their all natural concentrate is free of fragrance, hormone disruptors, harmful preservatives. You no longer have to wear a hazmat suit while you're cleaning up. For a limited time, head to branchbasics.com slash she speaks and use code she speaks for 15% off. That's 15% off your entire order at branchbasics.com slash she speaks with promo code she speaks. Choose Branch Basics because cleanliness matters. Cats are freaks. And if you have a cat, you love them for that. Like my cats are little finicky weirdos, but I would die for them. And so the least I can do is use Pretty Litter. Because, okay, Pretty Litter, yes, it's fab. It's lightweight. It's non-clumping. Traps odor and moisture. Low dust. I hate the dust. But the part that is the most important 
here is that Pretty Litter, but the part that is most important here is that Pretty Litter changes color to indicate early signs of potential illness in your cat, like urinary tract infections or kidney issues. And because cats can't talk, even though I'm pretty sure I think I know what they're thinking, they can't let me know when something's wrong. So I love having that peace of mind so that I can get a little warning sign and book a vet appointment if I have to. Also, I forgot to mention Pretty Litter ships right to my door. I never run out. I don't have huge kitty litter bags taking up space. Pretty Litter is amazing. You have to try it. Go to prettylitter.com slash she speaks and save 20% on your first order and get a free cat toy. That's prettylitter.com slash she speaks to save 20% on your first order and get a free cat toy. Prettylitter.com slash she speaks. Terms and conditions apply. See site for details. The media coverage was pretty brutal, and I was surprised Sandra Bernhardt was making jokes about it, too. Oprah also. Oprah, which was interesting, Oprah was saying that, and then she goes and does the special about uh, men who have been sexually abused as boys. And I just, it's interesting she didn't, like, put that together and kind of full circle it. The Tonight Show, Letterman. Cousin Diane is everything. Cousin Diane is the one who gets on the stand and says that when he was eight, when Lyle was eight, uh, she was over at the house and having a sleepover. And Lyle told her what happened, what her dad, what his dad was doing. So she goes and gets Kitty and Kitty didn't believe her and instead took Lyle by the hand or by the arm right back upstairs, basically to hand him over to Jose. Oh, God, I get shivers. That makes me nauseous. So, like, that's the home that they're living in their whole lives. Like, how do like this is a this is a story from when he was eight. Why would he? She witnessed this. It's crazy to me. Crazy. Aunt Joan is another one we love. Joan is Kitty's sister, and she does not make any apologies for Kitty not doing anything. She just says the fact that they went through that and that they can remember because this isn't, they didn't show it in this one, but I, like I said, I've consumed a ton of this content and there was some special, I don't remember which one, but the two of them were sharing stories and they both remembered lemon, the lemon juice and how everything needed to be, have lemon juice on it or ketchup because they didn't like the taste of their fathers. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. It's awful. What started the chain of events that led to the brother's purchasing guns and 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 arming themselves was Eric told Lyle about the abuse still happening. Lyle says that, you know, I wrongfully believed I could confront my dad and my mother without any consequences. There was a big fight and Kitty admitted, like, I know what's happening. You think I'm stupid? I've known forever. It's like, so you haven't been protecting him? And Jose wasn't like, oh, I'm going to stop or anything like that. Jose and continue to say, get up there, Eric, go to the room and wait for me. I think that that's what's really important, too, in this case, the imperfect defense. So it may be irrational looking at it from the outside. Uh, one of the one of the people interviewed in the doc says this, like, if you're looking at it like a movie, it doesn't seem rational that the boys really feared for their lives. However, in the home and the environment that they were raised in and they've been living in their whole lives, from that place they did they did think this is it this has been a secret that eric had kept for uh, 10 years Th- now it's out and now it's not like the dad is stopping the night of is the part where people have a tough time uh, on the other side it's like they they came down their parents were just sit- laying on the couch watching tv and they shot them point blank but in their minds they thought that their parents We're going to kill them. The jury ends up being split in the first trial. And the reason is the men couldn't believe that there was abuse and the women did. That really just says a lot, doesn't it? So they get this split jury on the first one. So it's a mistrial. But then right after that, OJ. And what happens with OJ? He is acquitted. And so the DA, the Los Angeles District Attorney's Office is like, fuck, we cannot have another We can't do another mistrial. So this asshole judge, Judge Stanley Weisberg, said that 
because Eric and Lyle are not women, the battered women syndrome doesn't apply. Also, that's how dated these laws are. Like the battered woman syndrome. We didn't have it for like abused people. Like we didn't say people. It was gender specific battered women. All right. Um, And no television was allowed. And the options for the jury were first degree murder or not guilty, because I guess that's what tripped them up. So, yeah, they were found guilty of first degree murder because those were the options because they weren't not guilty. They were guilt. They know they were guilty. They're up there testifying to it. Something that was brought up on Monsters, excuse me, the Ryan Murphy show is how Lyle was making phone calls to a woman and talking about how he's like manipulating the jury and how whatever. But excuse me, it turns out that's not really what was happening. He was bored and talking on the phone and saying things like, uh, I'm going to have to make something up to show this guy's motive because sometimes people can lie too convincingly. But that's no problem for me. I can do that. And I'm like, yeah, he can do that. These guys were, Eric wore, I'm sorry, Lyle wore a fucking hairpiece and his brother didn't even know about it. They were trained at lying. So these sorts, those sorts of things, not that surprising for me to hear him say that. Um, And in the, in the show Monsters, it made it seem like it was a lot more scandalous. And I went on like a dive trying to find like, who was he talking to, et cetera. And all I could find in terms of like Google searches were that this Norma Novelli lady, she had like this big old crush on him. And when it was clear that he was also talking to other women, she got mad and like did this out of revenge. I mean, she was in her 50s. This kid was 22 or 21 or something. So so that was Again, that, that fucking monster show was so irresponsible because it would show these little bits of information, but you weren't sure if you were if they were saying like that really happened or if this is real or if it was exaggerated. And I know that's what he thought he was going for. Ryan Murphy's like, that's what we were going for. But I'm like, but it just confused people because they assumed you were presenting them a story of what happened. And like Judge Stanley Weisberg, fuck you, man. So they were given a fucking raw deal. And then they do this Barbara Walters interview. And right after, they were separated and sent to separate prisons, which breaks my heart to think about that, that moment. But then I also get filled with so much joy thinking of when they were reunited not too long ago, third, like 20 years later or whatever it was. And so right after their original um, sentencing, they appealed it at the federal level, but then that was denied. And so then what do you do? Thank God, George Gascon, who is the current LADA, he has reopened it and is willing to give them a new hearing because they've been in prison for 35 years. And to have a life, to be born into a family like Jose, Jose Menendez is your father doing that, not giving you any life lessons or skills that you need, just teaching you how to lie for him and how to cover up for him. And then you end up in prison for the rest of your life. It's just like the kids were doomed. And that's why Kitty's own sister wants the boys out, have wanted the boys out forever. And I know that there's a couple brothers of Kitty's, but isn't it interesting how it's usually the men? And I noticed that a lot on online with the comments. It's usually men not believing it. Women can see it, but men can't. Or they don't believe. Maybe there was abuse, but it doesn't equate to they can, they should be able to kill their parents. Well, they didn't. They have been in trouble. I don't know why. I think it's like a stubbornness that some people have. And I can already feel the fingers clickety clacking as I say this, because I know some people really want to fight about this trial. But I don't understand why when they've already been incarcerated for 35 fucking years and they've had no offenses. They didn't talk about any of their time in prison. I'm sure they have gone through hell because young, they were young white guys who famously and publicly spoke about being sexually abused by their father. I'm sure that put a big fucking target on their back. And that is so sad. But they've also gone on to do great things, as good of things as they can do while they're incarcerated. So now that we've got a new hearing, the goal is take it down to manslaughter and they can be released on time served so that they can live out, makes me cry, so that they can live out the last remaining years of their lives. And it's going to be such a culture shock for them. I mean, it was like the early fucking 90s when they went away. It is 2024. Oh, my God. 
it was interesting to see what was factual from the Monsters Ryan Murphy show based on what's what was shown in the documentary. Because I think that was what my biggest issue was, is like it was hard to tell what Ryan Murphy was saying was what happened and what was just like someone's fantasy or someone's version of it or something. So it's good to see it like laid out factually. And you get to hear from the mean, bitchy Pamela prosecutor lady whose message for the TikTokers is uh, I'm armed. So don't try me. And then I know there's this big motion, this big movement to free the Menendai. Why the hell are you pluralizing their name? The Menendez, pro- what the hell are you doing, lady? But she's like, if you're, if what are we going to do? We're going to let TikTok just decide, let's have TikTok take a poll. I'm like, okay, so you clearly don't have any idea what the fuck TikTok does or is or what social media is about. Yeah, that's sort of why social media has been so important. That's kind of how like the Me Too movement and all that shit gained so much momentum. Because before there was social media and videos that can be released like that, yeah, people got away with bad things. So if anything, it's a good thing that but that's just she was talking like a shameless boomer who didn't want to evolve or adapt and was it's almost like she was so stubborn and embarrassed that she like didn't want to ever let it go. She she was a Karen. I was surprised Leslie Abramson didn't speak in this documentary, but she did through an email correspondence say 30 years is a long time. I'd like to leave the past in the past. No amount of media nor teenage petitions will alter the fate of these clients. Only the courts can do that, and they have ruled. That's bleak, isn't it? Uh, Jill Lansing also didn't talk. She was um, uh, Lyle's defense attorney in the first trial. And of course, of course, Dr. Ozeal didn't speak either. But I'm like, yeah, I, I wouldn't either. I would want to stay so far away from this if I was that corrupt ass doctor. I was like, is he still practicing? Who the hell would go to him? Who the hell would go to him as a psychologist? So on November 29th, the Menendez brothers get their new hearing. So we will be keeping our eyes on that right around the holidays. Oh, man. If they can get out, that would be absolutely amazing. But okay, go watch this documentary. If you're not familiar with the case, please Sorry, this this topic really bums me out. I, I do believe that these boys were actually abused, and it just is such a sad, sad reality for them. That's how, but that's I get it. Like I, that's just my thoughts. I know a lot of people disagree with me, and um, I don't expect everyone to feel the same. But it's just this is just such a bummer of a topic, and I thought I'd be a little bit more jazzed to talk about it. But it's all just the same stuff that I've known for a while. So. <sighs> all right. Well, I'm going to go after bumming us all out. But I love you guys. Mean it. I'll see you soon. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to She's Speaking with Emily Hanks. This show is produced, hosted, and edited by me, Emily, and brought to you in partnership with Cloud10 Media. If you are looking for bonus content, check out the Patreon. The link is in the description. To show some support, you can hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode. Another free way to support the pod, please rate and or review on whatever platform you listen. It's free and it helps the algorithm or something. You could also head to buymeacoffee.com slash she speaks and buy me a coffee or two. Make sure you're following me on all social medias. I am She's Speaking with Emily Hanks across all platforms, threads, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. That's it. Thank you guys. See you soon.